Good afternoon, this is Sean Golden with Golden and Golden. Here to discuss the basics of an issue that's becoming much more common as of lately is what do you do if you've been hit with a Form 3520A, U.S. person owner of a foreign trust? How do you uh, abate it? How do you remove it? How do you avoid it? Let's go through some of the basics. Unlike the FBAR and the Form 8938, the Form 3520-A is a little bit more complicated, right? It's used to report uh, ownership primarily of a foreign trust. It's most of the time it's due uh, March 15th. And when you want to apply for an extension of the form, you would file a form 7004, which is also used to extend uh, business like 1120S and things like that, not your typical 4868. There are many requirements for filing form 3520A. You've got to disclose information about the foreign trust. Is there a US agent? the address, uh, who handles the finances over there, uh, accounting, things like that. What makes 3520-A complicated is that oftentimes trusts that are not intended to be considered a trust are trusts, like your typical retirement trust, like your SIP, for example, uh, maybe a foreign pension plan like a superannuation or a provident fund. These are considered trusts even though they're not the kind of offshore trust you know you may you may read about see in the movies right it requires information oftentimes that you know with a pension trust or retirement that the person can't get because the trustee is through the employer like your 401k you know distributions and balance sheets and things like that that all is required to be disclosed on the 3520a but most of the time people can't get that information or trying to get it is a total hassle and beyond the scope of presumably what the IRS even intended with these uh, with these forms. And so there are ways to get around reporting it sometimes. There's ways to get around the penalty. In 2020, the Internal Revenue Service released Revenue Procedure 2020-17. This is a supplement uh, to an earlier, well, not a supplement per se, but it's supplements, let's, let's call it. Like back in 2014, uh, Revenue Procedure 2014-55 exempts RRSPs, which are Registered Retirement Savings Plans, and RIFs as well. In Canada, that was presumably the IRS thought primarily that's where these foreign trusts were coming from. They had gotten rid of the Form 8891, etc., etc. The 2020-17 is way more encompassing. It basically says if you qualify as either a tax-deferred trust or a tax-deferred retirement trust, and you have to, to meet all the different elements depending on whether it's retirement or not you can avoid reporting the form on form 3520a 3520 now that doesn't mean that you, you get out of reporting it for other uh, annoying acronyms like fbar foreign bank and financial account reporting yes those types of re uh, retirements and pensions are reported on the fbar same with 48938 the idea is for certain types of tax deferred trusts which aren't really designed to avoid tax and are ta in the U.S. and are tax uh, exempt or deferred in the foreign country, the IRS doesn't necessarily want, you know, Joe or Jane taxpayer to have to jump through all those hoops when they're reporting it on these other forms. So it's not like they're trying to avoid reporting. In addition, if you were already dinged uh, for not filing these forms, you can use the revenue procedure to go back and try to remove those penalties. Unfortunately, not all penalties from 3520A can be abated using this revenue procedure just may not be that type of trust so what else can you do so generally what will happen is taxpayer they are accessible penalties unless it's it's brought up during an audit you generally don't get any notice of it beforehand you get a cp15 notice basically telling you you've been penalized under like 6039 or whatever code section it falls under 6677 and then you get 30 days to protest right you can show reasonable cause and not willful neglect you may be able to get that penalty resolved. Um, if, if not, sometimes you'll, you'll get a request back to supplement it uh, or an opportunity to appeals. Going to appeals, there's pros and cons. You, gotta, you should speak with someone experienced before making any proactive representation because if you do appeals, it may eliminate the opportunity to do a collection due process, but which is typically better. Uh, but you may not want to do a collection due process because you you're kind of a sitting duck waiting to get a proposed notice of levy, which is not that big a deal, uh, versus an actual notice of federal taxing, which could impact your entire life. And so waiting to that point, it's called an end game opportunity. And waiting for that, there's 
pros and cons. So you want to be careful. And then depending on which route you go, you may qualify for tax court or federal court. Ideally, like in any situation, it's better to kind of cut it off before it happens. If you know you missed the filing uh, before you get penalized, there's various programs you can use to try to either avoid the penalty or at least set the stage and be proactive in the narrative of explaining why you meet reasonable cause. There's a voluntary disclosure program. That's for people who are willful. If you're non-willful, you've got the streamlined domestic offshore procedures, streamlined foreign offshore procedures, delinquency procedures, and reasonable cause. Um, oftentimes, if you don't have any unreported income or other assets other than the trust, uh, you may be better off with delinquency or reasonable cause, but you should speak with a board certified specialist before going that route. Uh, we have a ton of free information available on our main website and our sub websites. You can always reach out and schedule a reduced fee initial consultation if you think it's appropriate. Again, my name is Sean Golding with Golding and Golding. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.